Hey guys, welcome to Demigod's Music Production Hub and today I'm going to take you through a live video showing you how to come up with some ideas for drum loops. Now this is a really, really cool way of creating ideas um, for French house, new disco, straightforward funky house tunes. Um, I'm going to show you how I EQ, compress, pan, change levels and just the really basic things so you can get some really good sounding loops to help you create your tracks. I usually start with a empty drum rack. So let's find one here, pop it on a MIDI track. Okay, and now what I wanna do is populate the drum rack with a selection of samples. And I'll go through uh, an ever-growing list of samples that I seem to collect from random places here, uh, which is actually not the best idea really because it, it just therefore means you take absolutely ages trying to find something that you like. Whereas most of the time you can get something decent from just a few. Anyway, uh, a new pack I acquired recently, let's go here, is this set from Alindrum. So I'm going to take a few from here that I'm liking. Just audition them here. What I like to do to audition them is, as soon as I, they're clicked on here, I only then use the arrow keys. So obviously up and down plays it once as you land on it. But if you press right, you can play it as many times as you like, which is very handy. This one's got a bit more beef to it, so let's click on this one. We can drag that in. Always tend to start with the kicks. Uh, there's only two kicks in there. Let's find, before we choose any more from the Lin set, let's find some more kicks. Um, let's try the Disco House samples. And single hits, where are we? There we go. Let's go for the house drums. Bass drums. It's quite fat something really tight there we go I'm sure I've used that one before that's probably why it stands out okay so we've got a nice soft one there and a big old chorus type uh, main kick there right let's now go back to the Lindrums and I'm just going to audition some snares I think next that's what I tend to go to next what is that like them with a bit of snap so they cut through that one's got potential I usually choose two or three just so we've got some options when we're putting a loop together hmm. they're just different tunings aren't they of the same sample I think okay so I'm not really fussed with any of those other ones let's again let's take a random look into the muteki section uh, Don't know why, but I quite like that one. Let's get one more. I've, I've, I tend to find I know immediately whether I like it or not. I don't really dwell on them for too long. I don't know why again, but I like that. Maybe I like kind of like the long tail, so maybe we might use that at the end of a phrase, for example. Okay, so we've got two kicks, three snares. Let's go for some hats. Now I'm going to try my luck again, once again, on that Lin drum sample pack. I do like this kabasa sound. We're going to pop that in. Let me keep the top line for percussion. Okay, you kind of can't go wrong with that one. I find most hats you can tweak with EQ and various other effects anyway, so as long as the initial sample's quite clean. I like that one for a little, a little more, more open. All right. Let's, okay, let me just, just want to audition those again. Right, let's find some claps. Now let's go to another sample pack. I suppose one advantage of having this many sample packs is that your racks that you put together are always going to be very different. Let's try and find a nice 808 clap. I like that, but it's, uh, it's not enough. <laughs> I 
I like this one. Let's pop that up there. Okay, what else do we need? Uh, maybe one more clap. Let's go to another sample pack. Groove Criminals. That one's nice, it's kind of different. All right, there we go. So we've populated our drum rack with quite a few samples there. So now what I tend to do is, well, first of all, I'll set the BPM, depending on what kind of track I'm trying to put together here. Um, get rid of that. So what we do, I'm gonna double click in here. So this gives us our list of instruments that we've got here. And now we can just start to populate. We're just gonna press play on here. So one, two, five, normal kind of house BPM there. So let's keep that as it is. And I'm going to start with our little, let's put the kicks in, four on the floor, tend to then put some snares in. And already at this stage, I start to adjust the levels. Do want this kick to come through. EQ and stuff can always wait till later. All right, let's get some of this closed hat on. So what I like to do is, I mean, obviously that sounds rubbish, but I'm gonna, I've painted them all in. I'm gonna drop the level. And then just start to randomly, if you uh, press the B key, Change it to the little pencil icon and then you can just click to uh, take some out. Alternatively, you can just double click on them with the usual mouse pointer, it does the same thing. Okay, it's got a bit of a nicer groove to it now. And then what I tend to do is click them individually and adjust the velocity down here. So it's got a bit more of a human feel to the play. There's some louder, some quieter. Okay, I'm going to select them all and then we're going to move them ever so slightly off. I'm going to move, bring them a little bit ahead of the beat. Gives it a little bit of a shuffle feel there. Okay, right, let's get these claps involved. I always like to turn this little symbol on here and this is allows us to audition them. And it make, means every time you place one in or click on it, you hear it. So you know exactly which sample you're dealing with. Okay. Let's turn that one down a bit. Helps if I click the right one. The snares have got to go up a bit, I think. Actually, let's back all the kicks up first of all. annoying me let's move it all right what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the length here to four bars and what we've got so far I'm going to duplicate three times to fill it all in there and now I want and I'm just making this up as I go along, but these are the tens, these are the things I tend to do the most. Let's put this clap to a bigger clap there. We want that one, which one is it? No. There it is. I want that quite 
loud and powerful at the end of the phrase. So let's just see what that's like. Actually, I want it right on the fourth beat. So with this smaller kit, we can almost treat this as like an intro. In fact, the hats are way too busy. Let's see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna increase it again, all the way up to eight. Okay, and then actually just select all and duplicate that. And then the first four bars can be uh, the Lin kick, and then we'll move it up. Boom. And also, let's completely bin off those. I was, I've got the busyness of the hats in way too early there. Right, let's zoom back in to four bars. Oops. Nice, but what we want, I don't want it to get to that bit yet. Okay, I just want to concentrate on the build up. Okay, I've got an idea of a little phrase at the end that goes duh, 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 duh. So let's just, whoops, let's just loop this section. What I want to do is put this, these two little hits at the beginning of one, two, three, and four. So just holding down option to copy. It sounds dry as an old bane at the moment, but don't worry. We then we're going to add some reverb EQ, all the business, and make it really come alive. It's nice and big, but it's a bit too big. Okay, right, so it sounds pretty plain as day at the moment. But not to worry, we're going to really, really sharpen it up. So, next thing. First of all, we're just gonna start with a little bit of room reverb. Now, in order to do that, I'm gonna go into the drum rack. We're going to open up the chain list here and then click on this little R down here. That opens up the audio effect return channel for this drum rack. And we're gonna put in a reverb from Max for Live. If we go to audio effect, convolution reverb pro. I'm gonna drop that in there. And once this loads, I'm going to choose a great preset that I like to use for, for the drums. Let's double, oh, let's double click on here. And we're going to go type, made for drums. And then click on here, and we want percussion air. This is my favorite one. Turn the dry wet signal up to 100%. OK, I'm just going to loop this, actually, before we get to the, the big kick section. I'm just going to loop this first half. And we shall start with the closed hat zero one. So if I open up 
Our drums here. So it's this one. Just going to solo it for now. I think it's a really nice natural sounding reverb. Yeah, it's a bit too much. Let's get some volume up. Also going to use this opportunity to tweak some levels. And also do a bit of panning. I just like to bring the elements in one by one. Now with this clap at the end of the phrase, I actually want the reverb to be bigger. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate, let's pause this for a second, I'm going to duplicate our instance of the Convolution Reverb Pro. And for the second one, we're going to change the preset to snare plate A which has a slightly longer 1.22 second tail as opposed to the half a second one of the first instance. And yeah, that's up to 100%. And what we're going to do then is play the phrase and then we're going to increase B for the end of phrase clap. Maybe even a touch more. Okay, let's do a little bit of panning now. elements to either side. The incidental things that generally I keep away from the center of the mix. And obviously the kick's always going straight down the middle. And the other lower end elements, the snares don't vary. Unless they're little incidental fills, the snares will always be pretty much central in the mix as well. All right, let's have a look at the phrase now and open it up to the other section. I'm just actually now going to loop the imaginary chorus, if you like.
Okay. All right, not bad. We're getting there. It's still a bit flat and dull. Um, here's another tip for you. What we're gonna we're gonna add a new track, and I'm gonna find a top. A top is usually a, a drum loop, which doesn't involve the kick drum, or if it does, it's it's filtered so that there's not much low end, and it adds a, a nice shuffly percussive uh, element, which we can blend into the arrangement that we've already made. Now let's have a look in the good old sample back collection. Now off the top of my head, let's go in here, we're going to go to the Joey Youngman. This is a great sample back, really good quality. Wave loops, drum loops, tops and tweaks, there we go. Well, we might as well look in the 126, we're on 125 so they're not going to get warped too much. Now, for some reason, even though that's probably not my preferred type of beat, something about that reminds me of what we've already created. So I'm going to drop it in, and that will auto warp to our BPM. I'm just going to bring the volume down, actually all the way. I'm going to get these both playing. And we're just going to blend it in to start with, see how it fits. It's a bit strange, although strange, you know, it works, I think, in the first half. It kind of a nice staccato -y shuffle feel, it kind of feels like it's being held back, which is why I think we need a more straightforward one for the second half for when the big kick comes in. So, what I'm going to do is duplicate our first one, and in the first one, I'm just going to loop up to the halfway point. And the second one, do the opposite. Let's uh, do some housekeeping here actually. We'll say intro, chorus. Let's rename this top one. And then we need to find a more straightforward top for the second bit. Quite like that. A bit scratchy these, aren't they? That one I've used. <laughs> I've used that one before. I think there was one... Yeah, I think it was this one. Let's give this one a go. Um, okay, first bit of side chain compression is going to happen here. So, so that so that these two don't dominate our main efforts too much. So what we need to do to do that, well here's one way of doing it anyway, uh, is com create a completely new MIDI channel. And we can put any old MIDI instrument in here, so let's just whack an analog in. Okay, and on this analog we're going to put one note on the first beat of one bar. Make sure it's looped. Yes, good. Now it doesn't matter what that plays because we're going to mute it anyway. Then opening up our tops, let's rename this tops and let's rename this side chain. And now we're going to put a compressor on the tops channel. Open it up, we can turn on the side chain and we're going to take the audio now from this SC from the sidechain uh, analog instrument that's just playing that one note per beat. And right, let's, so that's muted, yep. Okay, then we're just gonna solo the tops for a second. And now really all we want to do is take away 
the main transient at the time that the kick would be playing. So it just muffles that transient a bit so that the kick of our main beat comes through that little bit more. All right, so just soloing the top here. Just want to take the attack off a little bit so we can have quite a slow, um, sorry, quite a fast attack so we don't have that. So if we have this all the way up, listen. So we turn the ratio up. Release, mm, quite a fast release. As we turn the threshold down, you can still hear the, the attack coming through. So we're going to drop this right off. And then adjust the gain on output. Don't want it clipping too much. Okay, now as we introduce the other beat, blends in nicely. Okay, now let's listen to the one with the chorus. Just gonna wait for the phrase to come around. The hats I've used in this need to change in some way. I think they're basically too long. So what I'm going to do is open up the drawing rat. I think it's these ones. No. This one. So double clicking on here. I want this to be, I basically play a shorter part of it. Now, even though that makes it sound unnatural, I think it kind of it just it's going to work in the mix just because it's the whole beat has got a, a kind of staccato feel to it anyway. So let's check it out. That's what it was before. Yeah, way too messy before. Much better. It just feels tighter now. Okay, let's make this top sound a bit more interesting. Soloing for a second. I'll take some of that low end away. And what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to put an auto filter on. Uh, select low cut. Maybe add a little bit of resonance. Okay, that's a nice filter. I'm going to increase the envelope a touch. Thins it out a little more. Now we're going to send an amount of this, maybe about half, to the LFO. And then the rate of the LFO, you can already hear it panning, now it's going to pan very quickly. I'm going to uh, set the frequency of the LFO to sync with our BPM. And the phase at 180 degrees, so you should be able to hear, hopefully you're listening with headphones. Slowly panning left to right. Gives a really good, nice sense of movement. All right, getting there. Now this is pretty much at a level where I would start to produce a track now. Uh, I'm happy with the sounds. If it was any more basic and plain than that, I wouldn't be inspired to start writing chords and bass lines and things. So the very last things I want to add to these loops is some compression on the kick drum to really make it pump and also some overall compression to the percussive elements of, of the beats. So what I need to do is separate the kick out and what we're going to do is open up the drum rack here. In fact we're going to separate both kicks out. If you right click on them you see you can extract chains. Now doing that it's Put it all out here. Just it's created a whole other drum rack just with the kick on. And on the small kick, in fact, I'm going to put the same plugin that I love to use on kick drums onto both the small and the big kick. And it's the Waves C1 compressor. And I've got a kind of go to setting, which is actually just a preset. 
and it's classic compressor. I don't touch anything, I just leave it like that. For all I know, it just increases the volume, but um, it, it, even if that is all it does, the plugin itself has a, a tonal character to it that I like. Uh, let's give that a quick audition here. Without. So punchy with it, it's great. Yeah, I might have to turn down the volume a little bit, we'll get to that in a second. So let's uh, bring in the rest. Okay, and let's copy and paste onto the big kick track. Okay, now I can rename this drum rack the, I'm just gonna call it Perk. And for these elements of a drum kit, I like, and there's another Waves plugin I like to use. It's the CLA. 3A. I'm going to drop that on and again I just like the actual start me up preset. I like this uh, initial patch that it loads. I really like how it glues all the elements together. Beefs it all up. And as long as we're not clipping over here I'm happy. There we have it. Okay, I hope you've found this useful, enjoyed it, and got some tips and ideas for yourselves. And what I'm gonna do actually, I think, is develop this further. So in my next video, or it might not be the next video I post, but uh, in the next part of this, I'm, I'm gonna show you how I come up with a bass line, uh, maybe some chords or a sample, and put, start to make a track out of this. Okay, thanks for watching, and look forward to speaking to you in the next one. Cheers.